Huge thanks to Amaze for sponsoring this week's video. Stick around to hear more about them later on. Today's video, I've got something a little bit different. Instead of focusing on an entire full EDC loadout, we are focusing solely on wallets. I've got a roundup here of some of my favorite minimalist card holder style wallets for your everyday carry. Pretty big price range, pretty big style range. I've got some pros and cons for all of these, but these are all unique, great options. Starting off with the first pick and my current favorite, we have the Reform card holder wallet. Now this is the the only folding wallet in the collection, but I think it still classifies as that sort of minimalist card holder design, has three card slots and is still razor thin for something that is a bifold technically. This is my current carry and has been for the past several months. I did get early access to this for a review unit. They were actually a crowdfunded item that is just starting to ship out now. They have tiered pricing, so the further time goes, I think the price is going to go up. But for right now, it's $64. Like I'd mentioned, it has three card slots. They say it holds up to nine cards. I would say pretty comfortably six, but all of these wallet companies all over exaggerate how many cards they hold. A few things I really like about this, it closes with magnets. This magnet enclosure is so satisfying. It's not overly strong, but it is definitely strong enough to seal on its own and just has a great satisfying click. On top of that, you have fully welded seams. I really like that there is a card slot on the exterior, so I usually put my normal, like, regular payment card on the outside, keep my ID and my apartment key and stuff on the inside. There's no branding on the exterior as well, which is a huge plus for me. So many of these wallets just have hideous branding. None that you're gonna see here, but when I try and look around for different options for EDC videos, it's disgusting how awful some of these designs are. So great minimal design. I really like this fabric. It's called Refine. It's a weatherproof, weather resistant type of fabric. Definitely a lot thinner and lighter than leather. This comes in at only 23 grams and overall is just really well designed. I love this layout with the slots, how they did it. I love the magnetic closure. I love that it's a folding wallet, but it is still like razor thin and just as thin, if not thinner, than some of these like single non folding wallets. I've been using the card holder variant, I think, as version two. They also have one with a built in coin slot. You forgo one of the card slots in favor of a magnetic closure coin slot. So if you do carry coins or if you want to carry an air tag in your wallet, that would be something to consider. I usually keep an air tag in my sling bag, so I don't have a lot of need for that redundancy. But overall, this has been a great wallet. I planned on switching after I reviewed it but just really couldn't get enough. I've been really happy with this design. Price point is pretty solid for what you get, I think. Um, overall, just very few things to complain about here. Next, we've got another favorite of mine. This is the Filson Leather Card Case. Now, this is definitely like a more beefy, you know, American heritage, traditional type of style and design, which I also love, kind of polar opposite to the Reform Wallet. You have four card slots, two on one side, one on the other, and then a center slot, which you can fold up some cash and keep in there or keep some more cards. It's made in America, which is always a huge plus. It's a Chrome XL Horween leather. I've done a ton of research on leathers over time. I used to sell luxury furniture before I quit and started making YouTube videos. Leather quality is definitely impressive. I think the patina has been great over time. I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing ages further. Definitely gonna be switching back to this at some point. This is the type of wallet that will last a lifetime. You could pass down to your kids. Um, I love the CC Filson embossment on here. Overall, just a really solid option, just super beefy for a wallet like this. You usually expect something pretty thin, kind of a little flimsy, even if it is durable, but this is just big and beefy, really solid stitching on the seams, uh, really great quality leather made in America. The only real downside to this one is the pricing compared to the rest of the lineup. It is the most expensive at $110, but if you're comfortable with that price point, I think the quality of materials and manufacturing and the fact that it's made in America makes it well worth it. Uh, it's up to you whether it is a good value or not, but I definitely love this thing. Next on the list, we have the recently revived Pact Mojito wallet. Now this is such an interesting design. I've never really seen anyone else do something like this. You essentially have a shortened wallet here with a little bungee that's on top and is designed to keep all of the cards in place. Definitely a unique and odd form factor, but I think I like it. You have two different slots here. You know, you have this main one as well as a small slot on the bottom. It's made from a vegan leather. I kind of go back and forth on vegan leather. I didn't see anything on their site that it was recycled materials, 
Sales Pact usually puts a pretty big emphasis on that. That can sometimes raise some concerns for me about the longevity versus something that would be traditional leather, um, also the plastic use that goes into making it. But Pact usually does a really great job at trying to mitigate their impact on the environment. So if you're someone that doesn't want to use animal products but still likes that leather feel and look, definitely a solid option from Pact. It does feel great, I will say, for a vegan leather. Really unique design, comes in at $45, definitely a solid option for the right person. Getting back into a techie synthetic sort of vibe like the Reform wallet, we have the Wayfinder Flux wallet. This is incredibly similar in the material and feel to the Reform wallet that I talked about, but it's a little bit simpler and a little bit less expensive. I think they're both excellent options. I carried this for a couple of years, I believe. I've featured this on the channel plenty of times in the past. I love this one so much that was what drew me to testing out the Reform wallet. Uh, you have three different card slots here. It says it holds up to 11 cards, but realistically, I think you're probably looking at about six, maybe seven. Really great feel to this material, just like that refined material on the Reform wallet. It's a TPU coated polyester, so it's weatherproof. It won't absorb water. Um, all really good options if you do any outdoor activities or commute outdoors. Lots of stuff that I am constantly doing. This one's really thin as well, really lightweight, comes in at 16 grams. If you like this technical type of fabric, I think one of these two options you'll be extremely happy with. This one comes in at $42, definitely an excellent pickup if that fits the bill for you. Next, we've got a recent favorite of mine that you might already be sick of hearing about on the channel, but we've got the Flowfold Minimalist Card Holder Wallet. If you've missed any of the other videos I talked about this, it's made in America which is excellent. It's made from recycled sailcloth and it only weighs 12 grams. Super lightweight, super thin, very simple. It's just one simple card slot here. Uh, this is definitely my go-to wallet when I go backpacking where the weight really matters and I'm trying to shave off every gram and ounce that I can. They have a bifold version as well, but I'm not a huge fan of those bigger, bulkier bifold wallets. And I think it goes against the kind of style and design of this. I like that's thin, I like that's simple. Uh, made in Maine, made with recycled materials, and it's only $15. Really solid pickup that fits the bill for you. I think it's a bit too simple for me on a day-to-day -day basis, but a really solid option for outdoor adventures. Next up, we've got something that isn't my go-to style, but I am a sucker for single person companies and quality handmade craftsmanship and made in America products. It's a miscellaneous goods carbon slim tuck wallet. This is kind of that old timey type of design. It reminds me of a tobacco pouch or something. You have one single opening here with just a little fold in tuck in top here. It's made out of four ounce bridal leather. Bridal leather is some of the best of the best in terms of quality. It's actually all hand stitched as well and I love that they've incorporated that stitching into the design and sort of identity of the wallet. You have a ton of really unique laser engravings all over this thing. It says keep it here. If you open it up though it says lose it. On the back you have a nice little saying on the back here. I'll put a close up in the b-roll shots. Overall this was a really cool and unique design. You don't really see a lot of this style from very many manufacturers. Like I said it's not my normal go-to style but it is a really quality wallet. They actually have a sliding scale for the price on their website as well. I've seen a few companies do this with different things over the years. I think it's really cool. So you can pay anywhere from $45 to $78 for this. You know, hand stitched, made in America, bridal leather. Um, you really can't go wrong if this style is something that speaks to you. If you haven't noticed already, you don't see any hard wallets or MagSafe wallets. I've tried both of those in the past and just really am not a fan. When it comes to the MagSafe wallets, I'm really concerned about the sheer force of putting something into my pocket. I don't want to be worrying about losing my wallet constantly. Or if I lose my phone, I lose my wallet as well. It just kind of seems like an unnecessary situation with an increase of risk. And the hard wallets, I've just never been a big fan. I used one for a couple of months to test and review, but I ended up not even featuring it on the channel because I really didn't like it. That's usually what happens with products I really don't like, usually don't see the light of day. I try and be as fair and honest with pros and cons for everything, but something that I just don't like at all. No one wants to just see me complain about stuff for no reason. So I skipped out on those styles today. If you think I'm wrong or if you have any recommendations to help me get out of those feelings, uh, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to take 
take a look and check into everything further. That wraps it up for the main part of the roundup this week. I've got one more video next week before taking a little break to head back to Michigan to celebrate Christmas with my family. I've also got a couple of solo winter camps planned and of course just some general R&R. My wife and I have always wanted to turn one of these visits back home into a big cross-country road trip but to be honest I don't think our 2003 Honda would quite survive a journey like that. Hearing stories like Nick Offerman's in his most recent book, getting an Airstream and hitting the open road with his wife to go visit family, that sort of thing has always been so appealing to me. That's why I'm excited to be working with Omaze this week to give you all a chance to win an Airstream Caravel FB20 and a Ford F-150 to tow it, all while supporting the Bob Woodruff Family Foundation. Their foundation helps provide resources and support to veterans, active service members, as well as their families. I don't talk about it much around here, but all of my professional video work outside of YouTube is actually working with a lot of these nonprofit and charity organizations. I always love when I get the chance to blend both of these worlds I'm really focused in. Omaze truly seems like a win-win. You get a chance to win some great prizes and you get to help some great organizations while you do it. So for a chance to win an Airstream Caravel 20 FB, a Ford F-150 to tow it, all while supporting the Bob Woodruff Family Foundation, head over to omaze.com slash Josh Fenn and enter now. The experience closes on December 30th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, so head over there quickly. I guarantee you won't want to miss this. Huge thanks to all of you for watching this week's video, and I'll talk to you in the next one.